Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the tuneful Sigmund Romberg musical, My Maryland, starring Gordon McRae and his guest star from the Metropolitan Opera, Dorothy Kirsten. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another famous play with music is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Perhaps you think of Barbara Fritchie as a gray-haired old lady. But the one Clyde Fitch wrote about in his famous play, which Sigmund Romberg made into his glowing musical was a young, lovely girl. And to play the part of Barbara, we have the young, lovely Dorothy Kirsten. As we bring you My Maryland. Listen. Those are the drums of my regiment, the Connecticut 74th, marching along the streets of Fredericktown. Connecticut boys came out in 61 and took a gun, each one. If we are a thousand strong, or only ten, we'll fight them all the harder then. And when at the end we'll say each father's son, the war is done and won. The men from the north will be the southern men of you. Tremble, sir. Your servant, Mr. Fritchie. That's hardly a statement of fact, Captain. As long as your troops occupy our fair city of Frederick, we must consider ourselves your servants, distasteful though it is to us. War is always distasteful, sir, to victor as well as vanquished. Perhaps our roles will be reversed before the year of 1863 is over. Meanwhile, Captain, I'll be grateful to you if you'll ask your men not to trample the flower beds which we have planted at considerable trouble and expense around this house. As you wish, sir. Men, you have heard Mr. Fritchie's request. I command you to respect his wishes. I thank you, Captain. You may be my enemy, but you are a gentleman. Good day to you, sir. How many? Dismissed! Where are you going now, Captain? Well, Perkins, I'm about to disobey my own orders. What? I'm going straight through those flower beds. To call on Mr. Fritchie's daughter. Psst. Barbara? Will? Will Trumbull, you shouldn't have come here. Why not? In broad daylight? What if my father sees you? I think I'm making friends with your father. Oh, 
he'd never forgive me for smiling at a northern officer. Oh, Barbara. I'll never be happy with smiles and kisses. You know that. This is what I really want. Won't you marry, marry me? Love does Harry, Harry me. Won't you marry me, Barbara? I love you so. get married, Will, as long as this hateful war goes on. It'll be over someday, Barbara. And then your family and mine can learn to be friends. How many years, Will? I don't know, but I don't intend to wait. Barbara, I know a minister in Hagerstown. He'll marry us tonight. Oh. If you'll come with me. Tonight? We love each other. That's the important thing. I don't know. Oh, Will, I don't know. Barbara! Oh, it's my father. I'll meet you here at moonrise. Go. Hurry. Till moonrise, my sweet. Goodbye. Oh, hello, Father. Barbara, I thought I heard you talking to someone out here. <laughs> no, Father. Oh, maybe you heard me calling to my girlfriend. Sue. Sue Negley. What is it, Barbara? Lucy. Jane. What are you calling them for? Why, uh, why, they promised to help me make some strawberry jam. <laughs> Oh, On a lovely summer morning, I believe the heaven of fair is blue. We have all been out and starting down among the strawberries in the dew. Pick the good from bad, then you add a sugar white. Quiet, On a lovely summer morning, don't you know the sensible thing to do is to gather them at dawning just before they go on the stove to stew. There is a secret known to few when flavoring strawberry jam. You pick in spice to make it nice. A real and jam. You will find the daisy cookie the way to a man's heart. But never mind the way of it if you feed them strawberry tart. When you have a Sunday supper with good Virginia ham, and then finish with gingerbread and delicious strawberry jam. If you have a bashful suitor who only visits there, he'll cry, oh, won't 
you marry me when he takes your strawberry jam? I know something about you, Barbara Fritchie. What? What do you know? You don't need any strawberry jam to get you a suitor. I hear you've got one. Why, I don't know what you're talking about, Sue Negley. Don't play so innocent, Barbara, honey. Why, everybody in Frederick knows you're carrying on with that captain from Connecticut. What if I am? And it's none of your business. I think it's just terrible. It's worse than terrible. Oh, Father. It would be treason if it were true. However, I assure you that my daughter is not interested in any officer in a blue uniform, gentleman though he may be, for I would not shelter a traitor under my roof. Will? Will? Here I am, Barbara, in the shadow of the summer house. Oh, Will. Barbara... I'm sorry I'm so late. Father's been stamping about the house all evening, listening for gunfire and getting his rifle ready. There's a rumor that Stonewall Jackson is on the march with 10,000 men to retake Frederick. It's true. He's already in Hagerstown. Then we can't be married tonight. I've got to leave with my regiment at once. No. They'll be fighting in the streets at dawn. Oh, Will, be careful. It's rather difficult for a man to be careful in wartime. But don't worry, my darling. I'll come back to my wife. But I'm not your wife. Not yet. Give me your hand. What's that? My mother's wedding ring. It's yours now, Barbara. And every time you feel it on your finger, you'll, you'll know that we are married in the sight of the Lord. Will, I can't stand it to be apart. I won't be far away from you ever. And darling, there's one thing we always have. No matter how many miles there are between us. The same silver moon Shining down through the trees We've the same night in June We've the same Listen, my regiment is for me. Goodbye, Barbara. Will, darling. Don't follow me with your eyes. Look up. The man on the moon will watch over both of us. Turn for the second act of My Maryland in just a moment. Did you ever stop to think that you live at the very center of the United States? Who, me? No, I don't. I live right here in California. Yes, but no matter where you live, you are, in effect, at the hub of a wheel whose spokes reach into every corner of the country, providing you with the products of the rich resources of a whole continent. The name of that wheel is Transportation. And its spokes are highways, waterways, airways, pipelines, and, most important of all, railroads. Without adequate transportation, our whole way of living would grind toward a standstill. 
Well, I didn't realize what a big stake I have in good transportation. It's mighty important to you, all right. For example, you're interested in having adequate roads and streets, and that means protecting the ones we have as well as improving them. Because you use the roads and streets every day, and your taxes help pay for them. Well, but I don't pay any taxes to keep up railroad tracks, do I? No, ma'am. Not a penny of your taxes goes to maintain or improve railroad roadways. The one and a half billion dollars that railroads spend every year on that job come out of their own pockets. I'd never thought about it that way before. But then I don't ship any freight, and I don't ride the trains every day either, as I do my automobile. No, but you're using the railroads every day just the same. Every time you go to the store to buy something, you make use of railroad transportation. For the railroads are the base of our whole structure of transportation. Indeed, no other form of transportation, nor all other forms combined, could do the big job that only the railroads can do. The job of providing the efficient, low-cost mass transportation upon which all our agriculture and industry are based. Here is Act Two of the Lawrence and Lee version of My Marilyn, starring Gordon McRae as Captain Will Trumbull, and Dorothy Kirsten as Barbara Fritchie. Your land and my land will be our land one day. Bright stars and white stars, we go on our way. I left Barbara and ran to join my regiment. It was a night of waiting, listening, fearing. For we knew that General Stonewall Jackson's army was advancing toward us. And the fighting would come in a matter of hours or perhaps minutes or even seconds. I went from campfire to campfire trying to cheer my men. But I could see in each face the longing I felt in my own heart for my Barbara. I wish they'd attack and have done with it, don't you, Captain? Oh, this is no kind of a war, Perkins. Battles should be fought on battlefields, not on front lawns and flower beds. I wonder, Captain. Do you think I'll ever see my sweetheart again? Oh, why, of course you will, Perkins. A day will come when the gunfire is silenced and there'll be nothing but laughter and sunshine in the air. Why, we'll pack away our uniforms in an attic trunk, put on our Sunday best, and go strolling again with our wives or sweethearts. <laughs> Cheer up, men. On the soft southern night When each bird is fast asleep upon its nest It is my fond delight To go strolling with the one I love the best Beneath the blossoms of magnolia The rosy sun slowly setting in the west Then how sweetly I agree and go strolling with the one I love the best Then how sweetly I'll agree And go strolling with the one I love the best She is everything that's charming She is such a smile disarming She is prettier by far than all the rest The rest how sweet will be our greeting when we have a tender meeting We'll go strolling with the one we love the best Every lady here has a cavalier Who is gallant and polite and young To his arm she'll cling while they softly sing Just the sweetest tune that can be sung with the sweet charms and white arms Much prettier by far than all the rest The rest Then how sweetly I'll greet And go strolling with the one I love the best Beneath the blossoms of magnolia The rosy sun slowly setting in the west In the soft southern night When each bird is past the farther on its rest it is my fond delight to go strolling with the one I love the best. Here they come, men. You see a tank. Hold your ground. Hey, 
isn't there any news, Father? Do you hear the sound of the guns, Barbara? They're coming closer. Yes, and that means our brave boys are advancing. They'll drive the blue coats out of Fredericktown. By this time tomorrow, Stonewall Jackson will be riding victorious through the streets. Father! I'm going to stand guard at the door. You stay here. And I may never see my... my husband again. Barbara. Barbara, I'm so worried. They say the losses have been terrible. I know, Sue. All we can do is pray. Pray that our loved ones will come home safely. Will they fight all night? Father says they will. And tomorrow, too. Oh, Barbara. It's all so mixed up. You're praying for a man in blue. And I'm praying for a boy in gray. Oh, Sue... The same love and the same stars are shining down on your soldier and, and mine. The same silver moon shining down through the trees. Coat or gray? Blue, sir. He's a Connecticut captain. He'll not find shelter in this house. Father, it might be... Will! He's badly hurt, ma'am. Dear Lord, Will, Will, darling... May I bring him in? Yes. Take him to my room at the top of the stairs. I'll take care of him. I forbid it. Pay no attention to my father. Do as I say. Bless you, ma'am. Bless you. This is my house. I'll not give comfort to my country's enemy. Your country is his country. We are at war. Is there no pity in you? You are not my daughter if you give him shelter. And you are not my father if you turn away my husband. Barbara. Yes. He needs me. I must go to him. Music? Barbara, well, what's that music? Lie back, Will. Rest. Why, it's Dixie. It's General Jackson's troops. We've lost. They've taken the town. I must be dreaming. I see the stars and the stripes flying from the window. You're not dreaming, Will. I heard it there. They'll, they'll shoot it down. They tried, but General Jackson ordered them to let the flag fly. I don't believe it. Look at it, darling. See it toss in the breeze. Why, why then everything isn't lost, Barbara. You'll grow strong again, Will. And the country will be strong again, too. One country, one flag. And victory for all of us. All day long, through Frederick Street, sounded the tread of marching feet. All day long, that free flag tossed over the heads. Ever its torn folds rose and fell on the loyal winds that loved it well. And ever the stars above looked down on thy stars below in Fredericktown.
ladies and gentlemen. Dorothy Kirsten will be back in just a moment. And our thanks to Raymond Burr, Virginia Gregg, John Shea, and all the members of our staff. And the whole season's thanks to our great arranging staff, Mr. Warren Barker, Mr. Will Bytel, Mr. Carl Brandt, and John Capers. My Marilyn, based on a play by Clyde Fitch, with book and lyrics by Dorothy Donnelly, and music by Sigmund Romberg, was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at the same time by the American Railroads. Marvin? When you think of highways, you're apt to think first of the roads and streets you use every day. Yes, they're important to you because you depend on them for much of your personal transportation. But there is another kind of highway that plays a truly essential part in your life, the steel highways of America's railroads. They are the very backbone of transportation in this country. And without them, you could not live as you do. For the mass production and mass distribution which makes your way of life possible depends on the efficient, low-cost mass transportation only the railroads can provide. Thank you, Marvin. Now, here again, ladies and gentlemen, is lovely Dorothy Kirsten. <laughs> Dorothy, there was never a more glamorous Barbara Fritchie. Oh, it was exciting, Gordon. Look here, sir, I got three bullet holes in my script. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Well, it was certainly a thrill to have you with us, Dorothy, to sing the opera that was really Sigmund Romberg's own favorite. What happens next week, Gordon? The world premiere of a new musical play, Dorothy, The Minstrel Boy, based on the life of the great Irish maker of songs, Tom Moore. Then you'll be singing Believe Me If All Those Endearing Young Charms. Mm-hmm, and a half a dozen more great Irish songs. Dorothy Warrenshaw will be here to look and sound as pretty as a Colleen from Kilkenny. I hope you'll be doing a lot of these new musical plays. I enjoyed them so much last summer. Well, the summer show train will be loaded with them, Dorothy. Our Railroad Hour playwrights, Lawrence and Lee, are creating a sparkling summer full of new stories to the music of Carmen Dragon's Orchestra and Norman Lubos Wonderful Choir. I'll be listening, Gordon. Night. Good night, Dorothy. All aboard. Well, dear friends, it looks as though we're ready to pull out, and so until next week, and the minstrel boy, this is Gordon McRae saying goodbye. <laughs> Maryland has been presented by special arrangement with the Century Library Incorporated. Gordon McRae will soon be seen starring in Warner Brothers' About Face. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff and our music prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroad. Now keep tuned to your Monday night of music on NBC. Tonight, it's the voice of Firestone on NBC.